With all of the core components put together on the test bench, it is time to do one of the most exciting, but one of the most difficult processes in this Hackintosh build, and that is all of the configuration and software installation. So of course, before we do anything, we need to make my bootable magic stick, as I like to call it. This is the pen drive that has absolutely everything you need to get your Hackintosh up and running. Now, before anything, guys, I'm just going to say that this is by no means a tutorial. This entire series is just a walkthrough of everything that I did building my Hackintosh. Now, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone at the Tony Mac x86 forum because it's a fantastic community and it's very, very easy to follow the steps in order to get up and running on your Hackintosh. As you can see, I'm just partitioning the drive there and now I'm opening UniBeast, which is a brilliant application um, that lets you create a bootable Yosemite USB drive. Now, it's ever so easy, but unfortunately, the first time round, as you'll be able to see after I type in my password here, I did indeed have some difficulties with this process, but that was nothing to do with UniBeast. It was all to do with my particular download for some reason. Even though it was a fresh download, I still need to re-download it. So, cue the second attempt. So with a fresh download, I attempted UniBeast again and everything worked absolutely flawlessly. It's a bit odd because I had previously freshly downloaded it. I basically did the exact same thing again, but it worked the second time round. And they were both from the App Store, so that's really, really weird. One awesome thing about using a USB 3.0 drive and a USB 3.0 port is, as you can see, that finished extremely quickly. Now, I did speed up that clip, but if you take note of the clock, you can tell that that only took eight minutes. So everyone says that that takes an absolute age. Um, if you're on 2.0, maybe, but on 3.0, it's absolutely not a problem. Eight minutes, and that gave me a working drive. So of course, just finishing off by dragging MultiBeast onto the drive because I'll need that when the Hackintosh is up and running or to get it up and running. And that is my drive successfully created and I am very pleased with the performance of it. So everyone with the drive in place, it's time to boot up the system again and um, install OS X, but there are a few things that we're going to have to do first. So, first off, let's turn on the power supply, turn on the system, and of course, get into the BIOS by holding delete. Now, hopefully, this is going to be a really straightforward process. I really hope I can get hack and I really hope I can get OS X installed on this system effectively um, without running into too many problems. So let's go into the normal BIOS here. First thing for us to do is to obviously load optimized defaults with F7. So it's just a case of jabbing that, hitting yes. And there we go. So now I believe I have to go over here and disable VTD, whatever that does, disabled and OS type is set to other OS and other than that guys I believe we should be fine if not we will soon find out so save and exit is F10 let's do that one save configuration and exit yes and now we will hold F12 uh, start up the system again F12 to go into the boot menu so that we can boot from USB ah fantastic so there we have it Patriot that is our memory stick. Let's boot from that. And there we have it. Awesome magic stick. Wicked. So this is the chameleon bootloader, guys, on the pen drive itself. Obviously, it's not on the system at the moment, but here it is. Little apple up there. Everything looking good so far. So we have reached this point. Now, I am going to try and boot just by using one boot flag. The one that I think I'll need, which is PCI. I've got it written down over there. PCI root UID equals one. Now, I think this is the only one I need. Hopefully when I press enter, we will boot straight in. If not, I've got some other boot flags I can try. But this will be very interesting to see what it does. 
where hey we have an Apple logo so that's a brilliant start and here is the progress bar. So this is probably a good time to mention guys that even though the UniBeast install went extremely quickly because I was using a USB 3.0 drive and USB 3.0 port, I've actually now plugged the 3.0 drive into a 2.0 port because of course I have no drivers for USB 3 yet and I doubt it would work. So just to avoid headaches and whatnot I've plugged it into a USB 2.0 um, so hopefully that will be okay. As you guys can see we haven't halted yet, but I don't want to speak too soon because it could halt at any time, booting up. But as soon as we see the installer, we should be pretty much safe. So we're making great progress so far. Okay, it's, it's going to do it. It's going to do it, maybe. Okay, a bit more progress. I think we're on to a winner, possibly, guys. I've got a good feeling about this. I've got a really good feeling about this, actually. And of course, we're on integrated graphics at the moment. I don't have the GPU. Hey! I don't have the GPU connected. So... Here we go guys, this is absolutely brilliant. Use English as the main language, of course. So first off, I need to prepare my SSDs. Wow, this is a little bit laggy, uh, obviously because we've got no drivers or anything at the moment. Maybe I should have done a couple more things in terms of bootloaders, but at least we're up and running. So the plan is guys, is to set up both of these SSDs. So we're gonna partition them both, single partition. <laughs> this is very slow. Okay, that's okay. Great. We'll name that Untitled 1 for now. I don't mind that. Um, or should we name it? I'm just going to name it SSD1. SSD1. Apply. Partition. That should go very, very quickly. Great. And then on the second drive, we are going to do the same thing. But of course, we are going to... GUID, great. We're going to call that... SSD to apply partition. Great, so that's that. Now we're gonna go over to the RAID tab and I'm gonna build up a really quick uh, striped RAID, so that's RAID zero, of course. Drag in both of my partitions. That one there and that one there. I really hope this works, guys. I haven't actually researched as to whether this works or not. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it at 32K, guys. I don't actually know what the difference is, but whatever. And we're gonna call this, for now, Macintosh RAID SSD, just so I know what it is, not that I'm gonna get confused. Mac OS 10 Extended Journals, 255 odd gig, striped RAID, great. One and two, great. So create that RAID, create. Okay, so it's busy on. It looks to be done, there we have it. There is the RAID, guys, looking great. So. I am happy with that, the RAID is online. Great, so that has worked successfully, fantastic. Let's close disk utility, hit continue, continue, agree. There it is, Macintosh RAID SSD, fantastic. Continue, and here we have it, installing OS X. Wow, this is exciting, guys. This is awesome, I'm so glad that we've uh, fired up and everything is working. It says about 12 minutes remaining, but I assume it's gonna take a little longer than that. But of course the SSDs are extremely, extremely quick and uh, the USB 2.0 bus will be the only limiting factor of speed so it should max out USB 2.0 so this should go fairly quickly guys. What I'm going to do is pause the camera and uh, resume when it gets close to the end. Alright guys, so we're nearing the end of the installer. Restart to complete the installation. Damn it, what the hell do I do at this stage guys? I've actually forgotten, let's take a look. This should be fairly interesting, guys. I don't actually know what to do now. Okay, so we've hit a funny little stage here now. I may have been panicking there for no reason, guys, and booting into the wrong thing. I did get a bit flummoxed setting up your Mac. <laughs> and it's not even a Mac. Ah, excitement, guys. Pure excitement. Love this. Okay, this is great. And I don't even know if it's properly installed on the RAID or what. Where the hell are we? Well, I tell you where we are at the moment. We're on the desktop. Check it out, guys. This is Mac OS X running. Holy, holy crap. This is cool. Let's take a look at about this Mac. So everyone, as you can see, OS X Yosemite version 10.10.3. It says Mac Pro 3.9 gigahertz, Intel Core i7, 32 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3, Macintosh RAID SSD, Intel HD graphics, absolutely fantastic. Storage, it just, just sees it as one volume, that is RAID, and there is the stick, that is awesome. And it sees every single stick of RAM, which is crazy. 
It even recognizes what display I'm using through the KVM. Wow, that's great. So of course now, guys, I need to run uh, MultiBeast. Let me um, up my scrolling a little bit because I need to install a bootloader and all of that jazz. So up my scrolling, that's it, good. Just so I can see. So I'm gonna copy this onto there just so it runs a little quicker. And I'm gonna run MultiBeast. Okay, now I've never ran this before, guys, and I've never even looked into how to do it properly, so I'm just gonna go quick start and DSDT free. Great, there it is, okay. Install, agree, type in my password, and we're just gonna go for it, guys. I don't really care if anything is wrong at the moment. It'll be good fun to diagnose anyway. I think this is going incredibly well so far. So I'm not sure how long this is meant to take. Um, it tells you exactly what it's installing, which is good. It's currently installing the audio drivers. And I do have audio plugged in, so I will be able to hear if it's working or not. And one thing I will do is also plug in network to see if networking is working. So I'm going to pause the camera and obviously resume when this finishes. All right, everyone, so that actually went really, really quickly. Um, so it says install, succeeded, the software was successfully installed. Great. Um, so I assume we quit that now, and I'm just guessing up to this point, guys. I'm going to restart the system, stuff it, and I'm going to restart it. Maybe restarting doesn't work, or we have to completely shut it down, I don't even know. But I'm gonna unplug the USB stick to see if it has installed the bootloader and everything like that. Um, okay, it says reboot and select the proper boot device. So let's take a look. Rebooting. Ah, okay, so we have quite a lot of different things here. We have Samsung SSD, Hmm. Interesting. Okay, because it doesn't see the RAID, it's not going to boot into it properly. Because it doesn't see the RAID. Of course it doesn't see the RAID, because the RAID is within OS X. Okay. That's okay. Um, so in order to boot then, I'm just, I'm just trying to think through this with my brain now, guys. Okay. Now naturally... It's not going to start up on any of those, so I'm going to put the stick back in, the magic stick, restart, okay, and we're going to go Patriot, now then, Macintosh RAID SSD, now then guys, this is intriguing, so we're booting up with the stick, insert it again, and I have a feeling that the RAID is scuppering us when it comes to, um... okay, so yeah, here's my system. Uh, caps lock is on, I think, is it? Can't tell, it's not lighting up. Okay, so here is my system. Now, audio is still not working, okay? So let's go into about this Mac. And let's take a look at what we're looking at. Okay, it's installed Mac Pro early 2008. Um, and this is installed on the RAID fine, but for some reason, it hasn't... UniBeast has not done its job, okay? So, uh, sorry, MultiBeast has not done its job. So, I am doing something wrong, but that's okay. So after reading up online a little bit, we do need to take some extra steps in order to get OS X booting properly using a RAID 0. And when I say some extra steps, I really do mean a lot. So, we've actually got to whip out another SSD entirely, another SATA cable, I need some more power cables, and I need a whole lot of free time and research to get this done properly. So, this next part of the video is going to be a little intense, I'm going to spend a lot of time in terminal, and getting a RAID 0 to work is a little tricky on a Hackintosh by the looks of it, so I really hope it's worth it. I do still want to go through with the RAID 0 because I did defend SSD RAID 0 and I do want to prove that the benchmarks are awesome and so are the real world performance results, but it is going to require a little bit more effort. So without further ado, let's dive into the next part. It's a fresh day of filming for me. Let's do it. So here we go again for another boot up. Let's give it a bash. Power supply on. System powered on. 
And now, of course, we're going to boot from the USB stick again, exactly the same as we've been doing. Here we have it. Now, as you guys can see, it looks slightly different now. We have uh, the OCZ SSD instead of the two Samsung 850 Pros. So, it is time to boot into our UniBeast stick. And we are going to, it's funny actually because it shows Macintosh SSD there. I actually have a version of a Leopard installed on this spare SSD. Um, we're going to boot from Magic Stick and of course install a fresh copy straight onto this single SSD because that's where we need to start from. Um, now we've got our Apple logo of course, but I have literally just remembered that I was using a boot flag, wasn't I? Which is a valid point. So the machine may not boot, but it'll be interesting to see if it does boot. Taking its sweet time this time guys, I can't really tell if it's halted or not. Um, but I'll give it a little bit more time just in case. It's very hard to tell what it's doing now. But there is no activity from the USB stick, so... Ah, here we go. See? Patience does pay off in the end. It's booted up wonderfully. Okay, that's great. It's actually booted up better than it did previously. So, of course, this process is all the same apart from creating the RAID. I'm going to erase this SSD. So what I'm going to do, guys, is... Um... Oh, look, it's actually fairly full. Hmm, it is actually a bit of a pain doing this, but oh well, we'll call this test. Um, oh, do you know what I'm going to do? Just to be retro, I'm going to call it Macintosh HD. Great, so that drive is all prepared and the rest is just standard affair. We'll stick it on that drive. And of course, it is now just a waiting game for this to install again. Um, but this is our actual in OS X installation this time, so this is really, really good. So my system actually hung during installation and I left it on, um, on its current state for about 10 minutes and it didn't move. And then um, it just completely hung and wouldn't let me do anything. So I've restarted now and I've entered the boot flag that I entered yesterday because we had a successful install yesterday. Um, so now... Hopefully it'll install just fine. Of course, I need to rearrange the SSD and everything. Um, and then once we get into OS 10, I can begin preparing for. I can begin preparing to set up the raid again. Um, now I have been spending my time making a load of notes, and I've got about 30 or 40 steps um, written down on my MacBook Pro, ready to um, perform the. What I'm going to do is partition this again. Ready to perform the science needed on the Ray Zero. And we are trying to install it yet again. So hopefully you'll see me at the desktop. So great news everyone, it's past the point where it hung earlier. So we could be, um, we could be up and running and laughing. It is currently quarter past three. So I can estimate that I'll be ready to start fiddling about with my Ray Zero at about four o'clock after Multi Beast and after getting all of the stuff that I need together on this OS X install to uh, to clone to the RAID 0. I want to get everything working before I clone to the RAID 0, so I'm going to give myself maybe 45 minutes to an hour to do so, and hopefully in that time frame we'll be able to do it, because I'm, I'm hoping that I'm nearly at the home stretch. I know I've got a big lot left to do in terms of you know terminal commands and stuff with getting this RAID 0 working, but... Um, you know, I can almost see light at the end of the tunnel now. As long as this installation goes okay on this SSD, um, that at least I have an OS X installation on the machine. So that's a that's a damn good start. And just like that, I've got a working copy of OS X on my Hackintosh once more. But this time, we are running on a single SSD. So what I'm going to do now is go through Multi Beast to download all of the little applications that I need. Blah blah blah, boring stuff. And then I will get back to you guys when I'm ready to start um, to start fiddling with my RAID 0. So that's going to be a fairly interesting process. But because I showed MultiBeast and whatnot earlier in the video, there's no point me uh, showing you the same thing over and over again. I may be installing this multiple times to get it working. So there's only so many times I can film the same thing. The time is 5.15 and I finally have everything up and running on my Hackintosh. Here we have it, Mac OS X Yosemite installed. Network is working, USB 3 is working, audio is working, everything is working perfectly and it is booting up without any hassle. Everything is great, I am very happy this machine could now be fully usable. But, 
I am going to make my life slightly harder and possibly open a whole new can of worms in terms of problems and I'm going to try and get my RAID 0 working with my Hackintosh. Now this is going to be extremely fascinating to say the least. So one thing I need to do in order to get it working is to reconnect the drives of course because the first step is to build a new RAID 0. Now I've written myself notes and instructions um, when it comes to creating the RAID 0 and how to clone everything and how it all works. Um, but it is fairly complex so hopefully I can follow that okay. And I still have some troubles shutting down the system, that's the only little trouble but yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, to let that go for now, we'll just turn it off for the power. And what I'm going to do is connect my SSDs. So it'll be really interesting to see if this machine boots up properly with the two additional SSDs connected because it is going to be now quite all over the place to say the least. So hopefully it'll find um, the single OCZ drive and boot up from that. But if not, I'm sure we can uh, quite easily select it. There we go, that's the drive. Great, it's found it straight away. Good, good job. So now it's booting up into my working install. As you will be able to see, fairly speedy for an older SSD. I've found the Agility 3 to be quite a nice drive in general. So here we have it. Password. And here we are. Now then, let's just check to see if it sees the drives. Uh, yeah, there we go. It sees Macintosh RAID SSD, but of course we'll be re-erasing all of that and changing it so it's all fresh, blah blah blah. Right then, this is where the hard part starts. This is where I start to whip out some of my complex stuff, to say the least. I'm not looking forward to doing this, guys. I don't think it's going to be the world's hardest thing, but I'm really, really not looking forward to doing this, because one little mistake and I'll mess the whole thing up, and I'll have to start all over again, and I'm already, um, I've already spent a good few hours trying to get to this stage, so uh, yeah. So the general plan is, guys, to follow the notes that I have made, and I've got them on my MacBook Pro just here with me, um, after I type in my password, that is. And I'm going to keep the camera rolling through the entire process and I'm going to show you guys in the video the most important and, uh, and fun things to show you. Or maybe I'll end up showing you the whole thing. So we're going to start by erasing my RAID and redoing the entire RAID. So for that of course we open Disk Utility. So there is our RAID array totally gone guys. So as you can see now we have two fresh Samsung 850 Pros. So we are now going to create our RAID once more. So I've now repartitioned both the SSDs. It's time to build the actual RAID itself. So we'll grab both of these drives. This will be a fresh RAID happening. Um, striped RAID, which is RAID 0. We'll call this uh, Macintosh RAID. It's 10 extended journaled. Uh, striped RAID. Options. We'll leave it 32K. OK. Create the RAID. Create. Okay, now then guys, here we have our brand new RAID down here, which is great. So what I'm going to do is press info and something that we need is our RAID identifier. This is a very important number, I believe. So if I make this bigger, RAID identifier, we need to store this. So if I store this there as RAID identifier. Cool. We are now done in disk utility. So now it is time to clone the drive and I was shocked that you cloned it this early in the stage. I thought there would be something else to do prior to cloning but you actually clone quite close to the start of all of this happening. So I've got Carbon Copy Cloner installed. We will be using this as a trial of course because you can use it for 30 days fully featured. Now then I haven't actually used this um, I haven't actually used this version, so what we'll do is we'll get Yosemite. We want that to be the source and the destination. We want that to be Macintosh RAID. Um, clone all files. Clone. We'll just go for that. Enter password. And because they're all SSDs, um, this should clone extremely quickly. Um, yeah, really really quickly as you guys can see that's actually cloning wow that's cool so one thing to just make my life a little bit easier I'm gonna select to show hard disks on the desktop 
Um, I always like to do that anyway. So what we need to do is copy our extras folder to the desktop. Right then, we need to edit a file in text edit. So we need to open org.chameleon.bootlist.boot.plist. And now this is where we enter our RAID identifier. So I believe underneath kernel flags, we use string like that. We delete this in favor for this. In there, we hit save. That did save, didn't it? Save, great. So we need another little program that I installed earlier, that's Pacifist. It's nice to see this in use actually in this tutorial that I'm following because um, this is a good old retro OS X application. Uh, don't check. Now all we need to do is go open package. Uh, all right, we've just got to wait for it to heat up. <laughs> good old shareware. Not yet. Welcome to Pacifist. Thank you very much. Open package. And this is where we are going to go down to uh, desktop. I do downloaded the newest version of Chimera, the bootloader. And we will open that. And we need to navigate all the way down to contents, user, standalone IS386. And we need to grab these three files, I believe. Let me double check, copy them to the desktop. So plop those files there, extract, type in our password, got the password wrong naturally, and boom, there are those files there, we can quit out of that, and if you noticed in the background, Carbon Copy Cloner was indeed finished and complete, which is great. So this is where we enter the unknown realms for me, and that is terminal, because I'm really not a terminal guy, um, but... There's no point being scared of it. So here we have it, terminal, boom. It is time to enter all sorts of commands into a terminal. So let's type sudo su, warning. Let's type in our password, go, sweet. Now, disk util list, this shows us all our disks. And we wanna look on desktop, cd, desktop, Boom, great. Okay, so we have set up our terminal window. Now, this is the intriguing part where we start actually manipulating the drives themselves. Um, and this and this list here is actually showing us all of the drives on the system. So, if I just take a little look at this, we have, this is disk zero, disk one, which is good. This is the first disk in the RAID, and this is the second disk in the RAID. And coming down here, this is our Yosemite install. This is um, this is our OCZ drive. And this middle one here is the actual RAID itself. So that is fairly easy to understand. Two separate Samsung SSDs, the RAID that is built, and also the OCZ SSD. So now this is where we start typing in everything. And um, there's a couple of different things to type. So. Everyone, I've done a little chunk in terminal that I needed to do, but I've actually realized I've made a mistake, um, which is gonna be vital to us in this document here. I've made a mistake here, okay? Okay, so in this part underneath kernel flags, um, string, I copied my RAID identifier right in. There actually needs to be some more stuff in there, so I'm gonna enter that now. Great, so that's all edited. I can now um, return to terminal and continue with exactly what I was doing. Okay, so now after a couple of double checks, I am ready to, um, to start doing things with these drives, okay? So... Okay, so that's one drive done, I believe. And moving on to the second drive, and then once I do all of this for the second drive, 
Um, we are done for terminal in the OS. So, let's mount that disc. Alright guys, so that is us done. It is time to plug in the UniBeast flash drive and shut down this machine. Shut down, shut down. If it's gonna shut down this time. So now it's time to do something very interesting and that is unplug our OCZ drive. So I'm gonna unplug it from the SATA connector leaving just the two Samsung drives plugged in and we're gonna reboot the machine up into the flash drive so that we can access terminal and then we should be good to go booting from the RAID. This is extremely exciting. Cannot wait to see if it works. Nearly, nearly there, guys. Okay, so turning the machine on. And of course, we want to access the boot menu to make sure that it boots from the UniBeast drive. Okay, great. So we have a few things here, of course, but we're going to ignore them and go to Patriot. And there we have it. Now then, going to ignore all this. Um, and we're going to use the boot flags that I needed to use to install the system and now this should boot the OS 10 installer from UniBeast. All we need to do is access terminal, that's why we're rebooting from the USB drive guys, we're not actually installing it again. We have exactly what we want here and that is of course terminal open from the UniBeast drive. So copying all of the commands then, let's just do it. First off, disk, hang on, disk, util, list. This is giving us our classic list of drives but um, as you can see there's quite a, quite a bit more um, to it but let's just take a look, let's just carry on going. So guys that is the list of commands that I needed to enter and there they all are, so that has done its thing. It's time to close terminal, shut down the machine, and that is it in terms of my instructions, guys. The only thing left, it says, is unplug everything apart from the RAID 0 and attempt to boot up the machine, so that is what we are gonna do now. First attempt of booting, RAID 0, three, two, one, go. And this is my most nervous boot of the whole build, guys, because I have just completely altered everything and I really hope it works. Come on, please, please, please. Holy crap, holy crap, that is a good sign. Okay, come on, come on. Yes, that is a good sign. That is a really good sign. Let's do it. Please, let's do it. Okay. Was it doing, what is it? Oh, no way. No way, guys, no way. Come on. Holy crap. Holy crap. And just to prove it, guys, just to prove it, Macintosh Raid, we are indeed using the Raid. Here we have it. Boom, 255 gigs. It is, it, it, oh my gosh, it works. I cannot believe that this crazy, crazy ass load of instructions worked holy crap uh, that is exciting for some reason audio has disappeared why is that guys why has audio disappeared output okay so audio has disappeared but I don't really mind about that for some reason all I care about is this and the fact that we have everything up and running on here and network and audio have gone that's okay I can reinstall those drivers I don't know why they've gone but that is that. So quick pause, let's see if I can get network and audio back up and running and if so that means that our OS 10 installation and configuration or whatever the hell this part is called is complete and boy was it a roller coaster ride. So after a lot of googling, um, this is a common issue with Yosemite and RAID Zeros. Now I'm confused because I booted this system up and everything was working fine until I installed that network driver. Now I can't imagine the network driver throwing off the system this far down. It can't even begin to load. Okay, it can't find um, it can't find the kernel. So that is intriguing to me, and I don't know why it's happened. So because of this, what I'm going to do, it is currently 19 minutes past six. 
what I'm going to do is try the whole process again with the drives, fresh install on the Agility 3, you know, unplug the Samsungs, do absolutely everything again, which will probably take about an hour, just to see if it was that network thing that threw it off, restart the system a couple of times, blah blah blah, all that jazz, and hopefully I'll have success this time. If not, I'm going to have to abandon the idea of using RAID 0, because the suggestion is, if you do run into this issue, to use Clover Bootloader. Now, I am not skilled enough or um, knowledgeable enough to do so, so I could use the hybrid, you know, Tony Mac and um, Clover method at a push with the tutorial. Um, but I have no, I, I have no knowledge on Clover at all. So I'd have to do, you know, a couple of days research and whatnot and make sure everything is hunky dory. So my plan is to try all of this again, which is pretty crazy. I'm not going to film it. Um, because it's getting beyond at this point. I've, I must have filmed at least six, seven, eight, nine, ten restarts of this damn thing. Um, but I'm not too disheartened. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll use one of my SSDs for now and I'll work my way up from there. So without, an, without any more faffing and without further ado, I'm going to completely reinstall the whole system. Wish me luck. So everyone, I have redone the entire process and it worked fine and I avoided using Multibeast, I used um, Kext Beast or whatever it's called and had the exact same issue. It will not boot into the RAID 0 which is extremely frustrating and annoying and it's I, it's so annoying because I'm just nearly there, I'm just like a millimetre away from getting it working um, really effectively. So I'm actually at a point now where I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I should simply... Um, this is booted into the, the old one, by the way, guys. This is not the RAID 0. I don't think, anyway. I threw a load of boot flags at it, at the vain hope that it may start up. We are actually running in the RAID 0 right now. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, do I have network? because I manually installed that kext. Yes, I do. Okay, guys, we've got some progress, actually. Crap, we've got some progress. Okay, cool. Oh, wonderful. I was just about to get all upset, but we've got some progress. I can actually, not meant to do this, but stuff it. Stuff it, I'm at, I'm at my wit's end. I'm actually running off the raid right now, so I used a, a shed load of boot flags to do this. And I don't really know which ones have have altered it, so I'm going to mess around a little bit more and give it a go. But network drivers are now installed. That is cool. Oh, guys. Blink and heck. That was not easy. We are up and running, though. Here we are. Oh, my gosh. I've actually lost the plot. And I don't know what's happening. Um, but anyway, storage. There is the raid. All I can see in front of me right now is... Lines of code, it's like living in the matrix, because boy oh boy was that multiple, multiple hours of trying to get this to work, but we are up and running with everything working on the RAID 0, and I was just about to call it a day, so one thing I've been dying to do is find out if all of that stress was worth it. So here we are, 3, 2, 1, start, black magic, go on baby, oh yes, go on. Go on, hit 900, yeah, you've hit over 900, sick guys, absolutely sick, so as you can see, awesome performance there, someone said that, you know, uh, SATA 3 is uh, 600 megabit a second on my last video, and I was like, and they were like, so you can't exceed that with RAID 0, so there's no point anyway. But it's like, yeah, I'll be using two SATA ports. So, of course, you can see the throughput here. Um, and this is uh, megabytes. Sorry, megabytes. And, yeah, insane. All of them have a green tick, which is great. So, yeah, that is great. Nearly topping off at a gigabyte there, to be honest, guys. So that is, that is some fast disk performance. But this is not a benchmark segment. Benchmarks will be part number five with accurate readings and all sorts and actually you know screenshots so you guys can see the benchmarks not just me pointing the camera at the screen and hope for the best but anyway that is 
my Hackintosh installation and configuration, my gosh, it is actually working. I cannot believe it is working. Here it is, and it is blazing as well. You click on something and it just boom right there straight away. Absolutely blazing, fluid, smooth system. Cannot wait to start using this even more, but it'll be so nice to get it in a case. So as you can see, we have some kind of success. We actually have awesome success with installation. That was multiple hours and hours of work and I did chop it down into way under an hour for you guys to enjoy because I just filmed the same processes over and over again. I'd like to make a couple of notes at the end of this video. A lot of people gave me stick for using RAID 0. They said it's not going to be worth the hassle to get it working and it is not going to impact performance. Now one thing I can say is unless you really want to get a RAID 0 working, it's not worth the hassle. It, it's given me so much hassle and even now that it's up and running it's still not totally hassle free anything like updating or whatever in the future will become much more difficult because of my introduction of a raid zero setup so of course even though updating and all of that is really difficult on a hackintosh anyway and you'd have to follow some kind of guide and there'd be special things you'd have to do that's made 10 times harder by having a raid zero in place so the bottom line is, I will talk about this more in part 5 when I talk about conclusions and my recommendations and I speak about my journey with my Hackintosh as a whole, but as it stands now, I am really glad that I persevered and installed the RAID 0 because, as you can see, the speeds are extremely rewarding. So the more observant among you may have noticed that I did this entire process without my GTX 960. Now this was a decision that I made based on hardware practicality and not based on software practicality. What do I mean by this? Well, to put it simply, my motherboard has been resting on the motherboard box as you guys know. I haven't had the system attached to a case. So one thing I really don't like is having big, heavy, bulky PCI cards, such as graphics cards, loosely hanging out of the PCI section of the motherboard. It's very dangerous in my opinion. A slight slip or whatever and the card, the own card's weight could completely rip the slot off of the motherboard. It probably wouldn't happen but I really wasn't happy about having my graphics card card sitting in the motherboard when I did not have the card supported via the case attachment. Now of course this may present problems for me and after seeing how difficult this process has been I've become increasingly nervous about using my GTX 960 or installing the Nvidia web drivers and getting it working properly. Now after the hassles I've seen with getting this to boot and how fussy it's been I really really hope that that'll be a smooth process. Now there's a lot of things to do with my hack before I have to worry about the GTX 960. You know, I have to do the case modding and I have to do all of the building inside the Quicksilver case before I even have to worry about booting up and trying to get the 960 to work. But I am still a little bit nervous because all of this has been quite a bit harder than I thought it would be. However, just like RAID 0, I did defend the use of a GTX 960, so I would love to get it working just so I can turn around and go, you know what, the parts that I chose were okay in the end but if it gives me hassle I may have to see if there's a slight alternative route I can take in terms of maybe buying another graphics card but I'm not going to jump to any conclusions yet I've got a good feeling about it I think it's going to go okay I'm just a little bit nervous because my Hackintosh is now working brilliantly and introducing an entirely new graphics card with entirely new drivers booting the system in a whole different way does scare me quite a bit but of course we will not be seeing any action until at least the end of part four maybe even the start of part five so cross fingers let's enjoy the next few parts and hope that the graphics card situation is okay